Recall when we took the dot product between two vectors a and b, that returned a scalar. And here we'll define a cross product between two vectors, which results in a vector that's perpendicular to both vectors. And to define this, we'll write the components of vectors a and b in a matrix so noting that the cross product between two vectors is only defined in 3 space we can obtain the components of the cross product between both vectors by removing one of these columns and taking the determinant of the remaining matrix so for example, to get the first component of the cross product, we'll remove column 1 and take the determinant of the resulting matrix in column 2 and 3. So we have A2, A3, B2, B3 being the entries of that matrix. And to get the second component, we take the negative of the determinant of the matrix that results when we remove column 2. So that will be A1, A3, B1, B3. And similarly, to get the third component, we remove column 3 and take the determinant of the matrix with entries A1, A2, and B1, B2. So if we expand this, we get the definition of the cross product between two vectors in component form. So remember that getting the determinant of a 2x2 two two matrix includes multiplying the cross terms and subtracting the result. So we get A2B3 minus A3B2 and the second component is the negative of the determinant. So that will be A1B3 minus A3B1. And the third component is A1B2 minus A2B1. Now the fact that the vectors A and B are both perpendicular to the cross product between the vectors can be shown by taking the dot product of A with A cross B and verifying it's equal to zero. And similarly taking the dot product between B and A cross B will also give zero. So for example you can verify this result by multiplying A1 with the first component, A2 with the second component, and A3 with the third component, and summing the result, which will give you zero. So I'll leave that for you to do as an exercise, and you can verify the second result in a similar way. And similarly, you can verify Lagrange's identity, which is the squared norm of the cross product between two vectors, is equal to the norm of A squared by the norm of B squared minus the dot product between A and B squared. So this here is Lagrange's identity, which will be useful to make some geometric interpretations of the cross product. Using the right hand rule, we can determine the direction of the vector that results from the cross product between two vectors. So if you take the bottom of your right hand, and put it in the plane of vectors A and B 
and then curl your fingers from A to B. Then your thumb will point in the direction of the resulting vector. And as we've shown previously, this vector is perpendicular to both vectors A and B. And furthermore, if we construct a right angle triangle between A and B, and designate this angle here between both vectors as theta, then this height over here is the magnitude of B sine theta. And then multiplying this by the magnitude of A gives the area of the parallelogram between both vectors. So we have the base of the parallelogram by the altitude or height. So if we use Lagrange's identity, by taking the squared norm of the cross product between A and B, which is equal to the product of the squared norms of both vectors, minus the dot product between both vectors squared. And we know the dot product is the magnitude of A by the magnitude of B cosine theta. And we took theta between 0 and pi. So if we substitute for the dot product and factor out the product of the squared magnitudes of both vectors, so we have the squared magnitude of A by the squared magnitude of B by 1 minus cosine squared theta. So using trig identities, this is sine squared theta. And because theta is between 0 and pi, sine theta will always be greater than 0. So therefore we can write the magnitude, or norm, of A cross B to be equal to the norm of A by the norm of B sine theta, which is the area inside that parallelogram. We can observe some properties of the cross product and one of those is the cross product between two vectors is not commutative. So what's equal to the negative of taking a cross product of B with A. So one way we can observe this is using the right hand rule. So curling your fingers from A to B your thumb points in the positive z direction. Otherwise, if you flip your right hand upside down and then curl your fingers from B to A, you'll get the following vector pointing in this direction, but having the same magnitude as A cross B. Now, the cross product is also distributive over addition. So if we have the cross product between a vector A and a vector that results from adding two vectors b and c, then that's equal to the cross product of a and b plus the cross product of a and c. And similarly, taking a scalar, multiplied by the cross product between two vectors, is equal to the scalar by a crossed with B. And that's equal to the cross product between A and the vector S by B. And intuitively, you can see that the cross product between A and the zero vector is equal to the cross product between a zero vector and A, which is the zero vector. 
and the cross product between a vector and itself is also equal to the zero vector. So recall that the magnitude of the cross product is equal to the product of the norms of both vectors. My sine of the angle between them. And we showed that that gives the area of the parallelogram formed by those vectors. And the altitude of the parallelogram was b sine theta. So the parallelogram formed between a vector and itself has an area of zero. And using the right hand rule, we can visualize the cross products between the unit vectors. So I cross J is positive K. And I cross K will be minus J. So if you curl the fingers of your right hand from K to I, then your thumb will point in a positive Y direction. So taking the cross product in reverse gives a vector that points in the opposite direction. And similarly, J cross K will give positive I. And as you can imagine, the cross product between each unit vector and itself is zero. So you can visualize this using the properties of the cross product. Recall the cross product between two vectors can be evaluated by putting these vectors in a matrix. So vector B goes in a row and vector C goes in a row. And to get the first component, we omit the first column and take the determinant of the matrix in column 2 and 3. And so on. So therefore the components of the resulting vector was B2C3 minus B3C2. And then we had minus B1C3 minus B3C1. And then the third component, we have B1C2 minus B2C1. So have a go at verifying this yourself. Now if we take the dot product of this cross product with another vector, then we put this vector in row 1 of this matrix. And then to get the first component, we omit column 1 and row 1 and multiply A1 by the determinant of this minor matrix. And similarly, to obtain a second component, we omit column 2 and row 1 and then multiply A2 by the determinant of the matrix with the following entries that are not in row 1 or column 2. And then in a similar way, we can get the third component by multiplying A3 by the determinant of the matrix with the following components, which is not in column 3 or row 1. And it follows that this triple product is equal to B dot C cross A. So we'll just go on to the right and take in a dot product, then the cross product in this order. So therefore this result is equal to C dot A cross B.
So we're always going this way to take the dot product and cross product in order. So if we look at the determinant, what we're doing is two row interchanges. So basically interchanging B with A and then interchanging A, which is now in the second row, with C. And similarly here, we're interchanging C with A. So now A is in the third row. And then we're interchanging A from the third row with B. So two row interchanges negates the determinant twice. So have a go at verifying this. The determinant of the matrix formed between two vectors with the components A1, A2 in the first row and the components of the second vector in the second row gives the area of a parallelogram in two space. And note that given the cross product only applies to three space, we give a vector A an additional component of zero and also the vector B a component of zero in a direction out of the plane. So therefore the components of A cross B are zero in the horizontal direction, zero in the vertical direction, because the resulting vector should be perpendicular to both vectors A and B. And in the Z direction, we have A1B2 minus A2B1, as we've seen previously, by evaluating the determinant. So therefore the magnitude of A cross B is the absolute value of the determinant of the matrix formed by the components of A and B. So therefore the absolute value of the determinant is equal to the area of the parallelogram between A and B. Now in 3 space, the determinant of the matrix formed by the vectors A, B and C with their components in each row of that matrix. So this is in 3 space. Is equal to the volume of the parallel piped formed by the three vectors A, B and C. So this can be seen by evaluating the dot product between A and the cross product between B and C. So recall the cross product between B and C is going to give the area of a parallelogram between those vectors. And if we construct a volume between those three vectors, that looks something like this. So we have the face between A and B, and we have a face formed by A and C. And then we can construct a top face using parallel lines to these ones. And the right face by having a line parallel to this one. So this here is called the parallel piped. So we can see that projecting A onto B gives the following distance, which is the height of the parallel piped, and then multiplying the base by this height. gives the volume of the parallel piped. 
So remember that using the projection formula, the height is equal to the absolute value of the dot product between vector A and this vector B cross C. on the magnitude of B cross C. So that's the magnitude of the projection of A onto B cross C. And the area of the base of the parallelopiped is the magnitude of B cross C. Which is the area of the parallelogram formed by vector B and C. And therefore the volume of the parallelopiped is the base multiplied by the height, which is equal to the scalar triple product. So have a think about this. 